Good morning, and thank you for attending the Organized Retail Crime Awareness Campaign Media Launch. My name is Mark Madramutu, your host for today's event, and the detective coordinator assigned to the Toronto Crime Stoppers program. Before we continue, I would like to read the land acknowledgement for Toronto. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is a traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse nations, Inuit and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. I would like to take this time to recognize some of our honored guests who will be sharing a few words with you this morning. Chief of the Toronto Police Service, Myron Demke. Executive Advisor of the Retail Council of Canada, Mr. Rui Rodriguez. And Chair of the Toronto Crime Stoppers Board, Mr. Sean Sporden. As well, in attendance with us today, we would like to recognize members of the Toronto Police Service Board, Mr. Ryan Teschner, Acting Deputy Chief of Police, Lauren Pogue, Toronto Police Service Command and Service Members, the Toronto Crime Stoppers Board and Team, surrounding Crime Stoppers programs, members of the community and stakeholders, our policing partners, and you, the media. Thank you all for your continued support and partnership to the Toronto Crime Stoppers program. At this time, I would like to introduce Toronto Chief of Police, Myron Demke, to share a few words with you. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Toronto Police Service, I'm pleased to help launch phase two of the organized retail crime campaign, initiated by Toronto Crime Stoppers and its partners. Phase one of the campaign launched in 2013 as shoplifting began evolving into a more lucrative criminal enterprise with billions of dollars in retail merchandise stolen or fraudulently obtained by groups of professional shoplifters. At the time, those involved in committing these organized thefts posed a significant threat to the safety of retail employees and the community. The Toronto Police Service is committed to supporting Toronto Crime Stoppers, and we will continue efforts to improve community safety by raising awareness about organized retail crime, and importantly, the ways to report criminal activity anonymously through Crime Stoppers. Community safety is a shared responsibility. You've heard me say that before, and I say it here again today. We encourage everyone to work together to help deter criminal activity and improve public safety. We are confident that this campaign will increase the awareness of organized retail crime within our communities and enhance public safety for everyone. Every year, Toronto Crime Stoppers is responsible for processing thousands of anonymous tips that help our investigators make arrests and resolve many incidents of crime. January is Crime Stoppers Month, and this campaign perfectly represents their theme to stand up, stand together for safe communities and the fight against criminal activity. I would like to thank Toronto Crime Stoppers and its partners for their dedication and continued efforts to make our community safer for everyone to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Demke. At this time, I would like to invite the Executive Advisor of the Retail Council of Canada, Mr. Rui Rodriguez, to share his remarks. Thank you, Mark, and good morning, everyone. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, as Mark mentioned, my name is Rui, and I represent the Retail Council of Canada, which in essence represents retailers across the country. A uh, couple of things I would like to highlight uh, 
what we hear mostly from businesses when they talk to Retail Council of Canada is not about necessarily just the shoplifting. And of course, that's always an issue we're going to be dealing with. It's really the increase of violence and prolific offenders that we're seeing. So as we compare to pre-pandemic days to now, uh, a lot of businesses report that the increase of violence, assaults, arson, property damage that are perpetrated in their locations is increased 200, 300 fold since pre-pandemic. That's significant. As most people start a career in retail when they're young, they sign up to work, to have fun, to learn. They don't sign up to be assaulted. The number of weapons being utilized now compared to previous years has increased, whether it's bear sprays, uh, knives, but we're also seeing guns. So a retail theft is turned into a robbery. It's turned into a, an assault. So programs like Toronto Crime Stoppers and the cooperation, collaboration with Toronto Police is really to bring awareness to the fact that retail theft is not a victimless crime. It's not just a property crime. There are crimes in retail that are just that, but there's a significant amount on the increase that are, they have a victim attached to it. There's a young person, there's our spouses, there's our daughters or sons that are working in retail are now facing this. So bringing awareness to that is critically important. The second point we'd like to stress is since pandemic and the evolution of shopping, e-commerce, the number of outlets that you can sell through, uh, through social media, it's no longer just brick and mortars and the growth, it's also created a growth in organized retail crime. It's easier now to sell to anyone. So the awareness to consumers to make sure what they're purchasing is legitimate, it's difficult when you're on marketplace to know whether you're buying something that's stolen or something that somebody is actually selling legitimately. Uh, so bringing attention to all that and the increase in organized retail crime is critical. So on behalf of RCC, we're very happy to be here collaborating with Toronto Police, to collaborating with Crime Stoppers to bring your awareness to a very important topic, to make sure that our communities and the people that are working in our communities see that it's taken seriously and that the community that sees these issues, sees the organized crime, see the violent prolific offenders, have an outlet to report it. If they don't feel comfortable going to police, they can do it anonymously. So we really appreciate that. We're happy to be part of this collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. At this time, I would like to invite the Chair of Toronto Crime Stoppers, Mr. Sean Sporton, to share his remarks. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, and thank you all for attending. Thank you, Chief Demke, for your continued support to the uh, Toronto Crime Stoppers program. Retail theft has long been seen as a victimless crime. However, the cost to retail businesses uh, cost a retail business approximately $5 million a year, resulting in higher prices paid by consumers. Shoplifting, as most know it, has evolved into a more lucrative criminal enterprise. With organized groups of professional thieves stealing or fraudulently obtaining billions of dollars in retail merchandise to resell back into the marketplace. This activity, known as organized retail crime, continues to be a growing concern for retailers across our city, across Canada, across North America, and even internationally. In addition to defrauding retailers, threatening employees, and increasing costs to you, the consumer, many of these organized retail crime networks use their ill-gotten gains to fund other criminal activities like human trafficking, drug trafficking, and gun and gang activity. What's more concerning is the potential public health and safety concerns involved. For example, some products commonly stolen for resale include infant formula, over-the-counter medi uh, medications, and other health and beauty products, which may be expired, repackaged, or improperly stored or handled before reaching back into the consumer. Recognizing the critical importance partnerships hold in the prevention of crime and the positive impact such collaborative actions can have on protecting the vital interests of a community, Toronto Crime Stoppers has partnered with Garter World the Retail Council of Canada, and the creative team at the community agency to develop a proactive campaign to bring awareness to the issue of organized retail crime. The focus of the initiative is straightforward. Create awareness in the community on the growing issue of retail theft. Let the offenders know the retail industry is taking action. And lastly, provide citizens with a conduit to relay anonymous information of those involved in this crime to the police by calling Crime Stoppers. This includes those who knowingly purchase these stolen items. The awareness campaign will comprise of a selection of out-of-home advertisements 
like you see here today, social media ads, and radio public service announcements. Understanding this crime is not isolated to just our city. Toronto Crime Stoppers has designed the campaign in a manner to be used generically by Crime Stoppers programs and police services across Canada if they are interested. This collaborative approach is aligned with the theme of 2023 of Stand Up, Stand Together. By working together with aggressive campaigns like this, Toronto Crime Stoppers and the retail industry will continue to make a difference in the prevention of crime at their locations. I will conclude by reminding everybody that community safety is a shared responsibility, as the Chief said. We must work together with a collaborative goal to make a difference in the prevention of crime while enhancing the overall safety of our community. Toronto Crime Stoppers is committed to our efforts to mobilize the community to see it, say it, stop it for a safer Toronto. Doing the right thing truly is its own reward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Borden, for your remarks. At this time, we would like to thank Toronto Chief of Police, Myron Demkew, Mr. Rui Rodriguez, Mr. Sporton, and all of you for attending today. To continue the efforts to raise awareness about organized retail crime that can impact our communities, the communities that we love. We value the time of our honored guests and open the floor to any questions the media may have. Please remember to keep your questions themed to the organized retail crime campaign. but just in terms of the type of retail organized crime that you've been seeing, do you notice that it's more small town, a couple people here and there, or are you noticing a part of a larger group where two or three people grab it and they, they answer to someone higher up? That's a great question. I would say it's all of the above. Uh, as I said, you know, the increase that we see in the outlets to be able to distribute tough economic times that a lot of people have gone through through the pandemic, uh, you've got the need. And as long as there's a demand, there's going to be supply. And if there's more ways to supply, uh, where organized criminals can hide behind a marketplace account. Uh, what we've also seen, and it's always been there, but more on the increase, is the professional thieves preying on those that have other issues, whether it's people that have drug addictions, people with mental health issues. So in a smaller community, you might see more of that people preying upon those folks that we know about. We see that a lot in Vancouver, uh, Edmonton, there's areas of Toronto, of course, uh, because they're offering, you know, return on, if you steal this item, bring it to me, I'll give you X amount of uh, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar. In some cases, they may sell it for 100% if it's enough demand. But we also see the organized retail crime groups we've always seen. And I say organized, these are folks that are extremely professional. Uh, some of the collaborations we've had with police when you make arrests of these professional groups, they have maps, they have agendas, they have fences listed out, they have a list of merchandise they need to steal, and they go across the 401, and they've got an organized schedule of what retailers they want to hit, what merchandise they need to get, where they're going to fence it off, and they make a career of this for four or five months, and then they probably go down south and enjoy it for a while. So to answer your question, it's everything. It's growing in all elements which is why we really need to get together collaboratively to make a dent on this. With uh, talk about the economy and where things are going, are we anticipating more, more crimes, more thefts? Do you have a sense of the trends? So to answer that, you know, one of the questions that our members, so Retail Council of Canada, it's an association. We have retail members that are from the largest to small to independent. So inflation comes up a lot. Uh, Canada has tried to maintain their inflation rate at a certain level, but we now have businesses, obviously, what, that are dealing with. We have inflation rates, we have crime, we have theft, we have losses, uh, and they're trying to keep the balance. So economic times are definitely putting an impact on that because a lot more people are stealing just for basic needs. You know, we, you heard Sean talk about some of the most common items that are stolen, over-the-counter medicine, baby formula. You know, sometimes baby formula is used to cut for drugs, but it's also used for babies, families that need it, uh, meats from grocery store. Those are some of the most common items. So just based on the items we see being stolen, you can see there's a direct correlation to people are in need just to feed their families. So the economic times are certainly having an impact. I would stress back to tie it back to 
organized retail crime professionals will prey upon that. culpability for people that buy these items. I think a lot of people might say, hey, look, I got a pair of jeans for 30 bucks, but I didn't steal it. So what's their sort of culpability? What should they Well, listen, uh, there is a, a criminal offense of possession of property obtained by crime. Uh, that people who buy stolen property, property are uh, subject to investigation on and potential charges for. So it is in short order. Uh, short, to say it very succinctly, it is illegal to buy stolen property. From the 2013 campaign to now, are there any sort of tangible benchmarks that you guys hit to say, okay, look, we see that this is going well, because I read that it also got rolled out then outside of Toronto as well, right? I'll uh, turn that question over here. I, I can answer that. So in 2013, um, I organized the, the retail campaign then as I did now with our partners at the Retail Council of Canada. Um, I think what we're seeing is the evolution of, of uh, professional shoplifting. It's not, um, you know, those kids or, or, or those folks that are going into a store and stealing a pair of jeans. That's not what this campaign is about, although that is shoplifting. What we're talking about is the increase in organized shoplifting, if you will, um, and, and what, it, what it does in funds. Right, so when these folks are going out and, they're, and as we said, they have a list and they're, they're going across the 401 or wherever they're going and they're hitting all of these retailers, they're, they're using those funds to do other things, other criminal activities, right? Um, so from the retail industry, uh, you know, professionally, that's where I come from as well, we are seeing uh, an uptick in, in that type of activity um, of being uh, targeted for items in certain stores, um, as we spoke about earlier. So it is kind of on the increase. It hasn't really gone down since 2013. Actually, before, uh, before we go any further, I did want to follow up um, and not miss an opportunity. Um, you know, when you ask about uh, buying property, I think the old adage of it's, if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Um, so what I, the message really should be is um, people need to be thoughtful that when something is offered at an extremely low rate, they need to be uh, asking a lot of questions and coming to understand why that price is what it is. And the, the offense of possession of stolen property is certainly something uh, that is uh, a jeopardy that people face if they knowingly take possession of property that was obtained by crime. Um, but the, the message really is, is people need to understand that, like has been said many, many times, when something is too good to be true, it likely is too good to be true, and that includes when the price is that low. Thank you. Thank you all for attending today, and we will conclude uh, this session now, and if there are any other questions after, we'll be available to uh, meet with the media. Have a great day, everyone.